you may be seated. Because God is holy and his word is so holy, I think it's a great moment to pray together. Thank you, Lord, for this incredible opportunity that we can be from before you throne and give you praises. Now, Lord, we ask you that when we open the word, your word, we can be uh, inspired by it, corrected by it, and also we can hear your voice. We give you this time. Speak to us, Lord. Use me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This is beautiful being here today. Uh, let me give you a little disclosure right here. I'm Cuban, so my first language is no English, as you can tell. So for those of you that maybe uh, have some experience in life, uh, maybe when I speak, uh, I remember you to Ricky Ricardo. I love Lucy. <laughs> if you don't laugh on that one, it's like a Sofia Vergara. <laughs> for this time, or oh, maybe a baseball player from Dominican Republic, uh, Big, Pop, uh, Big Papi, when he do uh, uh, the, the TV show for the game. Okay, so now, with this in mind, uh, I want to invite you to open the Word of God in two places. It's a little different today. Uh, I want to invite you to the Bible in Hebrew chapter 3. And if you have one of this, uh, put uh, one mark in Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 3. And the other one, I will invite you to go to Numbers chapter 12. So we want to try to connect two passages from the Old and the New Testament that help us to understand uh, an idea that uh, the Bible is, uh, you know, telling us and the title of my sermon today is The Servant I Want to Be. Uh, you know, in these days, and uh, people want to be so many things. And so you are a student seminary, or you are a pastor, or you are a leader. Uh, we have to uh, face that challenge, who I want to be. I remember growing up uh, as a little kid in Cuba, uh, I got my heroes and a boxing figure that I want to be a boxer like him so when I get to my room I dream boxing and moving like him uh, maybe it's your uh, lady you dream to be a my wife uh, have a dream to be a princess so he take a towel put it in his uh, head like a long hair so uh, I don't know what you're dreaming to be, but what I want you to be is be who God is calling you to be. And honestly, uh, in these times of social media and a lot of uh, challenge that we face, uh, some, sometimes we are, get tempted to be famous. Honestly, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be fancy. I want to be faithful. And the challenge today for you and I in ministry, whatever you are in ministry, even when you are at the end of the career or maybe just starting the ministry, I want you to remind this. God don't want anything for you and me that being faithful. And I have a saying in my life because uh, my life always been filled of challenges and things that I never believed that I can accomplish. I, 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 learned, I learned this. When the assignment is bigger than your ability, the only thing that God is required for you is faithfulness. He will cover the gap. If you don't remember anything from this preaching today, remember this because you will need it for ministry. When the assignment is bigger than your ability, the only thing that God is required for you is faithfulness. He will fill the gap. If you don't remember anything from this Cuban, remember this in ministry. When your assignment is bigger than your ability, the only thing that God is required for you is your faithfulness because he 
will fill the gap. This has been my experience. I was born in Cuba, in a communist country. My mom was a very strong communist, member of the party. My dad was an alcoholic. I don't have any chance to be today in this seminary preaching the word of God. But God is faithful. And if we want to be faithful, we need to start with God. We need to start with Christ and think about your life. Is you can stop right now and look back in your life. How you get here. The only reason that we are here together today from different nations, different ages, generations, backgrounds, is only one. The faithfulness of God. And the same God who brings us here will take us from here to whatever he is planning to take us. Do you believe that? So with this in mind, I want to invite you to open your Bible in Hebrews 3. Hebrew is a book that is for the Jewish to understand uh, Christ as a superior in everything, right? And now the author is trying to tell to his brothers that Christ is superior than Moses. But he will use a word in this chapter in the first verse that repeat more than once. And since you are in seminary or you are a professor, you know that the one word is repeating multiple times in a small portion of the uh, uh, scripture is because it's an indication. And reading chapter three says, therefore, holy brothers, you who shared in a heavenly calling considered Jesus, the apostles and high priests of our confession who was faithful to him who appointed him just as Moses also was faithful in all God house. You see in verse 5 again repeat Moses was faithful. Verse 6 says but Christ is faithful. So when I start reading this, say, it's hard for me to be faithful like Christ. We're talking about another level. But, great news. He says, you can be faithful like Moses. So I say, okay, that's fine. Let me figure it out. If I can be like Moses, I will be very good. I want to be like Christ. But maybe we, we can start being faithful like Moses. So this passage is connecting to Numbers 12. So I want to invite you to go to Numbers 12 with me to see what is the scripture talking about the faithfulness of Moses. Because remember this. How many of you know the calling of Moses? He don't have what requires to do what God is calling him. Exodus 3, you feel the calling, and he's wrestling with the calling. He say, I, I cannot speak, but you will do the job. I'm here in trouble. I say, okay, I cannot speak English well, but the Lord told me, you will do the job. Maybe you are facing right now a challenge in the ministry, in life, in the family life, marriage, student life, ministry life, that maybe you feel that you, I, I, don't ha I don't have it on me. Well, that is a good sign. Because God never calls someone to have it. That calls people that can depend upon him to get it done. So let's go back to Number 12 now, to figure out a few things about the faithfulness that is in Moses. 
And Numbers 12, the passage says that Moses was faithful in the house of the Lord. Number 12, 7, you will see it. But before entering Moses' life, I want to tell you a few things. Number one, I would want to frame this part of the sermon. We want to talk about the complexity of the ministry that we are calling to do. Ministry is not simple. Any amen here? Any, anybody know that ministry is not simple? If you are students, you know that, okay, I want to be a pastor because I want to be in the spotlight and everything will be fine. A worship leader, everything will be not. Well, when I started Prestonwood Espanol 15 years ago, I used to have a lot of hair. <laughs> Gone. Why? Ministry is more complex than we think. So, so <laughs> but require faithfulness. If you read 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 4, 2, it says, require to be faithful to the steward of God. When you read Paul to Timothy, 1 Timothy 3, the requirement is faithfulness. Paul to Titus, require to be faithful. So it's a big deal. So I don't want to be famous. I want to be faithful in whatever God is calling me to do. So let's go back to the complexity of ministry. Number one, let's see what happened to Moses. Anybody know how the chapter 11 start? So now Moses is moving the people. Chapter 11, verse 1, a word, very clear there. What we had there? Complaints. Do we have complaints? Require faithfulness because you will face a lot of complaints in ministry. You will get complaints from the deacons. You will get complaints from the ladies. You will get complaints from the men. You will get complaints the way that you dress, the way that you handle staff, the way that the music is played at church, the way that we uh, handle money, the way that we conduct. Complaints will be in your way. Required faithfulness. Now, the people are complaining. God have a plan. God have a new line. God have a way to go. They have food. But they don't like the food. They have manna from heaven. They don't like it. That means that you can give people manna from heaven and they will be complaining in ministry. So are you ready for complaints? But this is not the only things that you will face in ministry. Are we are facing in ministry. Number two, go up to chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 11. What we got now? Now, their own family were criticizing him for some decision that he made. Do you know what you will get in ministry? Create this system. Write it down. If you don't remember anything, remember this. You will get that. If you go to ministry or you step in ministry thinking that you will please everyone and everybody, you are wrong. People will criticize the way that you worship, the, the, the way that you make decisions. You always will have criticism. And the thing sometimes, it's not the outsiders. And the people who are next to you, like Moses. But you remember who called you. You remember who is faithful, who's been faithful to you, who will be faithful forever. And this is our model, Christ. Take your Bible, number chapter 13, verse 32. They are about to possess the land. They are about to enter in the dream that God had for them. He sent spies. Let's go and check it out. Ten spies. 
6. Impossible. 2 says, we get it. But 10, start creating a confusion in the congregation. And you know what you have in the ministry too that require faithfulness? Confusion. Write it down. People will start saying things about you, about your ministry, about your calling that will confuse the plan of God in your life and the people around you and they will confuse everything that you are trying to accomplish. They will misunderstood you. They will misinterpret interpret you and they will try to confuse everybody and when you think you have everybody pulling in the same direction you will feel like no it's not and it's an illustration right here that two people are carrying a big refrigerator in a door right and they were pulling the refrigerator like for a 30 minute in the stuck in the door and they say let's let's take a break so they were sweating uh tired back pain and everything, say, I never have a huge challenge like today to put a refrigerator in it into the house. And the other say, oh, really? I thought that we were taken out of the house. So two people working together trying to accomplish two different things. Welcome to ministry. Does anybody say, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. You want another C? I'm a Baptist preacher. I can do a lot of, you know, a list of words with the same word. Okay, let's go to chapter 14, Numbers. Verse 10. Now it's getting worse. Do you know what they want to do? Write it down. Controversy. They want to kill Moses. This is when the board committee meet and they want to kill you. Sometimes people will kill you, will like to kill you, but require faithfulness to stay in the calling that God is calling, calling you to do. And because also that, you know, complaining, criticism, confusion, and even controversy to kill Moses wasn't enough, go to chapter 16. What we got there? How's the title? Rebellion. Let me stop right here. If you want to step up of ministry, it's a great time now. <laughs> but God is not calling you to throw the towel. He's calling you to be faithful. We don't have to be famous. We don't have to be fancy. We have to be faithful. Because when the assignment is bigger than your ability, the only thing that God is calling you to be is faithful because he will fill the gap. And even in Hebrews, he's telling, brothers, Christ is faithful. He say, it's so hard, but Moses was faithful in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord for them means the Israel community, the, the, the people of God. What is the house of the Lord for us today? It's the church. We are the temple. We are the body. We are the house of the Lord. In ministry, God is requiring us to be faithful. Don't throw the towel. Even when you are not popular, when you don't have the applause, when people are criticizing you, when they're making bad judgment in what you are doing, be faithful. And now the question is how I can be faithful? How can I be faithful? I will give you two biblical settings that help us to be faithful. Number one is, write this down, communion with God. The resources they found to be faithful is God. Because faithfulness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Right? 
The only way that we can be faithful is we having time with the Lord. I remember, you remember this, when Christ go to the wilderness to be tempted by the evil one, he get 40 days of fasting, and after that he get tempted. And the temptation was about what? Is truly you are the son of God. Well, before the wilderness, he was in the Jordan River. And when he was baptized, he get out of the water and he hear a voice. You are my beloved. And that voice carry with Christ to temptation. Let me tell you this. When you spend time with the Lord, the voice that you hear in the presence of the Lord will carry you through temptations. You need to spend time with the Lord. I know that in seminary we are busy. I'm, I'm in seminary too. I'm studying. And I'm pastoring the church. I'm doing so many things. But let me tell you, nothing like to spend time in communion with God. No resources can supply that. No abilities can supply that. And I will give you a th few things about the communion with God that I have. You spend time with God. Make sure that you hear his boy, voice loud and clear before you start listening to criticisms, complaints, and everything else. Make sure that the Holy Spirit bear witness daily to your spirit of who you truly are. The Bible says in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit be, bear witness to our spirit. My identity is not in what is going on in my ministry. My identity is what happened at the cross. Sometimes we tie our identity in what is going on in the ministry. No. My identity is what happened at the cross. My value is not how many members I have in my church, how many A's I got in classes, or how many people like me and love me. My identity is in, in the one who loved me when I was a sinner, and he died his life, for, gave his life for me. But we need to spend time with the Lord to hear that every day. In the, in the era of social media, that our students and teenagers are going to depression, anxiety, because they are seeing a fake like of others in social media, let me tell you this. Don't allow the like of your followers be more important than the love of your father. Where I get faithfulness from? Spending time with the Lord. You see it from the whole Bible. Number two. So number one, community, communion with God. Number two, community of faith. We want to be faithful to the Lord. We need to spend time with the Lord, but we need to have a great community of faith. Community of faith. Most of those who have failed in ministry were alone, Isolated. Why? You need a community of people. I wish I had more time to read the Bible to say how many exhortations to one another you find in the Bible because it's in the community of faith, it's in the building, it's in the body of Christ that we find support. People who pray for you, people who encourage you, people who tell you be strong and courageous. God have a plan with you, but when you isolate yourself in ministry, it's hard to be faithful by yourself. And I will give you a few, few more things. 
you need to surround yourself with true friends, people who really care about you and who really know you well. The other day, uh, we were in a meeting with Pastor Jack and Connor Bell and so, all our executive team. And Connor Bell said to Pastor Jack, Pastor Jack, I will be your short leader when you were preaching. And Pastor said, I'd rather uh, have a, a prayer warrior. Sometimes you don't need so many short leaders. So, so need, sometimes you need prayer warriors around you. Do you have one? Students. Do you have someone that's praying for you that know you well? That know you as well as I have a friend of mine that is a great pastor in Miami in a small church. And he knows I have so many members and I'm on TV and all this stuff. But he don't care about nothing of that. Every other time he calls me and say, hey, are you taking time with Yanni, my wife? Are you spending time with the Lord? He's not impressed with all my ministry. He cared for my life. You need people like that around you to be faithful. People who have uh, permission to look you in the eyes and ask you the hard questions. You need people who pray for you when you are tired. People who fight with you and for you when you are tempted. Do you have that? Do you have that? Hey, we need each other more than we are willing to admit. Great leaders always surround themselves with people that can be partners, accountability. So God created two things, communion with him and the community of faith. The only way that we can be faithful is when we take seriously the importance to spend time with God and having people around us who care for us. Because crisis will come. Criticism will come. Complaints will come. Confusion will come. Rebellion will come. If we want to remain faithful to the calling that God is calling us to do, we need to know that when the assignment is bigger than our ability, the only thing that God is required is faithfulness. He will fill the gap. I want to pray. I don't know where you're fighting right now. Maybe you are about to throw the towel in ministry or studies or even in a personal fight that nobody knows. And I want to give you an invitation today to respond to the word of God. Maybe you are missing that time with the Lord. That communion with him. Maybe you are missing that community. You don't have friends. You don't have people that you are giving the permission to interrupt your life and say, hey, maybe you feel alone. Isolated. Leadership is a, is a lonely place sometimes. But I want to ask you, Do you want to be faithful? If you want to be faithful, please, wherever you are, pray and say, Lord, help me to be faithful to you. Lord, help me to do what you are calling me to do. Is anybody here says, God, you are spoken to me today. And you need to respond to that calling too. Maybe more communi communion with God. Maybe start building a community around you who protects you in ministry. I want you to do a weird thing. Stand up wherever you are because I want to pray for you. Anybody today say, that is for me, Pastor. I want you to pray for me. I want 
publicly say, I need to spend more time with the Lord. I need to build a community. I want to be faithful. Anybody says, I am. God bless you. Anybody else says, this is for me today. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Lord, we're standing here right now in front of you. Me too, Lord. I want to spend more time with you. Because I want to be faithful to you. I want to have more friends around me. Because I want to be faithful to you. We need you, Lord. Help us to be strong and gracious. Here we are. We need you. In the name of Christ, we pray. And everybody says, Amen. God bless you.